institutions consulting gal galvanize which is now diligent over to you tom thank you are you talking to us the team i'm not sure yes we can I'm, hear you i'm trying to uh, my camera gone conked up so i don't know why anyway please go ahead tom um uh, okay excellent well so, hi everyone oh sorry we just uh, played the video of uh, itr and bond and uh, tp bond so um there's not much questions at this moment but you can just uh, give us small walk through and then we'll take q and thank you sorry for that. sure absolutely so let me share my screen with everybody and please do stop me and ask questions as we go through so hopefully you can all see my all see my screen now and yeah. you'll see um on my screen that we've got the new um asset inventory um built um into the platform um, and what i've got in here is an example of using the asset inventory um for it risk management and what we're doing at the top level within our asset inventory is defining different types of assets so in my IT risk management example, you can see that we've got assets for information systems, hardware, cloud, and software. In each of these inventories, what we're able to do is add and manage multiple different assets. On the top right-hand side, you'll see that I can press the add asset button to create a new asset into my inventory. But of course, an organization might already have all of their assets defined. And that's where we would integrate with the CMDB and ServiceNow, for example, and pull in the assets from those other applications. So let's create a new software asset. Um, let's have this asset as uh, SAP, for example, SAP for HANA, uh, and we'll click add. You'll see that when we click add, we're asked to enter information about this asset. So we're now inside the SAP for HANA asset. We can see then at the top, it's showing us where it is in our workflow, which we'll come to in a minute. But we can see any high level information that's been recorded about these assets. As I scroll down, you'll see that actually each section of the asset is broken down into details, additional information. And in the detail section, what we're being asked to do is record information like, well, who is the business owner of this asset? Who within our organization is responsible for it? Who is the technical owner of this asset within our organization? And you'll see we can record further information about the um, references, the IP address, the host name, for example, um, a short description uh, of the platform uh, and which business unit uh, it belongs to. Once we save that key information into the platform, what we're able to do is start moving through um, the workflow. So from here, I can move it from draft and register that as a new asset in my, uh, in my inventory. If we refresh our page, we'll see that the key information is now updated into the header. And once we register it, we can start moving through to our categorization process. Now, generally what you need to do with your software assets or any IT assets uh, is understand how critical they are to your organization. What would the impact be if those assets um, stopped working? What would the impact be if the data within those assets was stolen? So we need to understand the criticality of that asset to our organization. And what we do then is actually launch a criticality assessment. And we probably send a questionnaire to the business owner of this asset. And when I click send, then the platform is going to automatically fire off a questionnaire to that business owner. I'll go to my emails on the other screen. 
and we'll drag that across. And you'll see that I've got an email now from the platform saying, please respond to the IT categorization questionnaire for SAP for HANA. We're going to look at the impact to your asset in terms of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So what we can do is click on that. And of course, you'll all be familiar with the questionnaires in Highbond. And this is actually um, an out of the box questionnaire. So it follows best practice on what the RSAM guys have been doing um, for a long time with their customers. You'll see we can record what type of information or data is stored. So we might say, well, it's employee information, customer information, financial information, um, because it's SAP. Who has access to this data? Well, it's gonna be accessed by staff members and remote staff members. Next, we need to think about the integrity. So what's the legal implication if it's compromised? Well, if it's compromised, there's probably gonna be a uh, compliance investigation um, and there might be some fines as well because we've got customer and vendor details in there. Now, if it was compromised, how much in penalties would we need to pay? Well, probably less than 100,000. How much would it cost to recover the system information? Well, quite a lot because you know it's all of the financial information in our organization. How damaging could this information be if a competitor was given to it? Well, I'd say severe, it's all our resource planning initiatives. And could it lead to fraudulent activity? Yes, definitely. Next, we're gonna talk about availability. So how much data is stored and processed in this, in this platform? Well, a high volume of data, you know, it's our transactional data of our organization. Um, what are the critical periods of access required for this asset? Well, we really need to view it hourly. If it's not available, who's affected? Well, the sales team can't process their sales. Our customers can't, um, we don't know who our customers are. Um, senior leadership can't do any planning. Uh, a majority of our employees can't raise purchase orders or give out payments. And our vendors would be severely implicated as well. And what would be the effect on revenue or sales? And we can just go through and click some of these things to understand what the impact would be to our organization. Okay. Now with that information, what's gonna happen in the platform is that it's gonna actually automatically score the criticality of our, of our, uh, of our asset based on the information provided. Yeah. Was that a question? No, no, thanks, sorry. Okay, so you'll see now that the, the, the information provided through that questionnaire has been translated into the asset criticality level, confidentiality level, integrity level, and availability level. So what we're doing is automating the business impact assessment of the assets for, for our customers. From there then, we can move th forward through that workflow. So now we understand how critical this application is to our organization. Um, we understand um, what we need to do in terms of checking um, the risks and the controls associated to this asset because of its criticality. And what we need to do next then is define, well, which wish and controls, which frameworks are gonna be used to make sure this asset is secure, that it's governed correctly uh, and it's managed. So I can slip down then to my frameworks and I'm going to connect this asset then to my IT application governance framework. So I can go into it here, go to processes, select systems access management for example, and I can check that my software assets are associated to this asset type. Okay. And now in a project, we can assess the risks and controls associated to that asset. 
in a project, for example, we can then go to my IT compliance review audit. We can go to planning. We can go to scope. And now we can scope those assets that we've put into our inventory into our project. So for example, here's SAP for HANA again. And we can select which sections then of our IT application governance framework are relevant. I'm going to say systems access management, availability management, all of this stuff is, is relevant, right? And click continue. Save and scope those assets. And now what you'll see then, what you'll see then against a control, for example, if we go down to one of our control assessments, in control x-ray, is you'll see now that these assets are mapped to the controls. So this control is used for SAP for HANA, Slack, and Zoom. I can click on SAP for HANA, and it will take me back to those details that we were looking at before related to it. Any questions on that? Everybody comfortable? It's not too uh, not too 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 complicated, I don't think. It's quite an out of the box product. Yeah, I think there are no questions. Huh? No questions. Okay, so that's thinking about assets for IT risk management. But of course, we can use assets for um, third party risk management as well. So I'm just going to switch to a different uh, org unit where I've got that turned on. Uh, and you'll see here again, we've got my asset inventory. And you'll see in this example now, I've got a third party asset type. Within my third party asset type, you'll see all of my different third parties, Dell, Workday, that kind of stuff. Um, you'll see a lot of them are drafts. So let's choose Salesforce, for example, as a third party. You'll see that we can start recording the details about that third party. So again, who's the business owner? Who's the risk manager? a brief description about it, so on and so forth. And we can again move through that process of registering that third party into our inventory. We then want to categorize, i.e. we want to find out about the impact, the implications of using this uh, third party. So in the same way as we were doing um, for our um, IT assets, we want to understand um, what data they'll be storing, how critical they are to our organization, um, and all that stuff. So again, we receive an email, this time for Salesforce. I'll click on that uh, response button here, and you'll see we get a similar questionnaire. So what type of data is stored, so on and so forth. Let's fill out some of this stuff. quick okay and then back in the platform again then we can choose to approve and score the responses that we've received to that categorization questionnaire and you'll see now that we get the criticality level uh, again scored within here what we can do then is actually move through a number of further steps. So these steps are extra. They weren't present in the, um, in the IT risk management um, workflow. So this time I can risk assess my third party. And what we're going to do here is actually send a questionnaire to one of our third parties. And these questionnaires out of the box are built using industry standards. So CIQ or SIGLITE. 
and we can select our vendor to send this to. So now from the platform, we're actually sending out questionnaires to our third parties. I'm sure you've worked with customers before that just use this, just use Excel to collect this information. But now they can use Highbond to collect that information as well. Okay, so you'll see now we're asking for the company profile, um, about judgments, about uh, information security aspects. And you'll see again, this out of the box question is very extensive. So asking lots of questions. Okay, so I won't make you sit here while I answer 20 pages of, of questions. Um, Tom, no sorry to yeah. interrupt you. I just had a quick question. Sure. Um, who are the who is the audience that is most likely to be answering these questionnaires? Can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, the your vendors. So basically, we send it out to all the vendors and all the such as in this uh, in this case, it is Salesforce in this example. Yeah. And they are supposed to answer these questions, and we get a score back in the system, exactly. uh, and we approve that score and move forward, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So think about when we sell somebody high bond, right? Uh -huh. The yeah. vendor sends up, the company sends us, our customer sends us questionnaires to complete, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what we're doing here. Understood. Okay. Thank you so much. No, good question. Good question. Um, so yeah, so we can accept that. Uh, that that'll give us a risk score, of course, um, related to the answers that were provided. Uh, and we can accept that risk level um, and move forwards. Now, what's interesting um, about third party is that we can start to review um, that information. And you'll see that I've got an option to either activate the third party or archive the third party. And the idea is that actually against our third parties, once we've got the answers to those questionnaires, we're probably gonna have findings. So things that we need to ask the third party more about and things that we need to be remediated. So for example, let's add a, th a third party finding and we'll say um, SOC2 report out of date. Let's get rid of some capsules actually. So now I'm adding findings to these third parties. And against these findings, then they also have workflows. So, for example, we can start to record this question that we want to ask the third party about. We want to get what their answer is, so on and so forth. And we can start moving through the remediation process um, for these third parties. OK, and then closing out the findings and the problems that we've identified. OK. And once we've resolved those issues, we can activate this third party into the uh, into the risk rating. Now we need a rationale. Okay. Okay. And we'll activate. So now this is an active third party. And if we wanted to, we could reassess it. So imagine we it might be a critical third party, and therefore we need to reassess it um, on a uh, on a weekly basis, on a monthly, on a yearly. Sorry, on a yearly basis, um, depending on the criticality that we deem that vendor and the risk as well. Okay. So I've shown you two workflows using the new assets module, one for third party risk management and one for IT risk management. But I want you to think about that actually they're just configurations of the new assets in the platform. This is an alternative that I designed for a customer the other day. They needed a privacy by design process, okay? Uh, could be a conflicts of interest register, a new product approval process, a incident register. Now, that might be uh, 
something that we would have had to try and do through results before. Uh, it might have been something we had to say no to. But now we can use this asset capability to design solutions for lots of things. So we looked at the asset inventory. We looked at adding new assets. We looked at sending out questionnaires about those assets, scoring the criticality, doing a risk assessment and identifying findings or risks. That is all options for us to configure. So for example, for an incident process, we might identify an incident. We might then send out questionnaires to collect information about that incident. We then might do an assessment um, to understand the business impact. And then we identify risks or findings and remediate those. So you can imagine that we can actually start to design many different um, solutions on top of the uh, stuff that's already been built in the platform. Um, Tom, and yeah. just another question. So have you ever come across a scenario where um, in the score on the scoring level, on the scoring part, the score was not approved or it wasn't satisfying? Um, what do you mean in terms of it's the scores so, too high? Yeah, maybe. So we don't want to approve it. Yeah, definitely. So let's, um, let's, if we can move back, I would, but absolutely, you know, before I, we didn't have to approve it, we probably mm -hmm. would have had a finding around, you know, the risk, risk score is too high. Okay. And you'd manage and remediate that, um, through the process as well. Okay. Good question. Okay, so it's not it's not too um, it's not too complicated, guys. That's where we're at today um, for everybody on the call. Uh, is these nice, simple, out of the box solutions to do some pretty basic stuff for our customers, but to to automate the work that they're doing. As I'm sure you've heard from the product team, in the future, over the next couple of months, they'll be adding um, adding um, configuration capabilities. So that you can use these assets to build your to build your own solutions. It's pretty exciting when you think about the di all of the different things we can do um, with those new assets. Okay. Any no, questions? Tom. Uh... Hey. Yeah, uh, you know, depending on uh, the questionnaire, I don't know how much confidence any we will gain from just answering the question by the third party vendors. Uh, you know, usually we work as a data driven uh, GRC or uh, maybe other sources of data in order to gain more confident about the answers that have been provided in order to assess the risk in more accurate. So, you know, we have been asked by many of our clients but I thought that it's only a management of questionnaires uh, rather than to dig deep more analysis about what's going on for the third party. Yeah, so you can, um, we've not integrated it yet, um, but we are building um, integrations with um, something called um, the Steel Risk Intelligence data set which is something mm -hmm. that um, one of the companies that um, uh, Diligent has. And what you're able to do with that, it's still in, um, still, still early days yet, um, but it should be released in the next month or so, is compare your third parties against mm -hmm. all of the data that's inside these different buckets. Good. Good. So actually monitoring that on an ongoing basis. And I think, uh, we can send you the, uh, we've got some product product information on that that uh, Nazim can send you. Thank you, thank you. 
if he's still there. Nazim, that's that's what we were talking to um, Fidelity about. So Tom, is this uh, for uh, for the IT risk management and the, for the third party risk management? I think uh, robotics can also play a big role in gathering information as well and doing some analysis that would back up these um, findings or or uh, or scorings that we are assessing. Mm -hmm. um, so we can collect the questionnaires from the from the client side. What about robotics? Can we use it in order to do any analysis from our side or, uh, you know, enhance until this is released? Can we do something to, to further enhance, you know, the, the, the validity of these answers using robotics to collect data from different various information sources? Or is this at the moment not possible? It is, it is possible. It's just not something we've built yet. Um, because obviously it's very new, um, so it's kind of just in in first phases. Mm -hmm. If we go if we go back, you can actually look at the robots that are already doing this work for us. So if I click on robots here, um, you'll see um, that there are a number of um, third party robots now in the platform. So for example, when we're doing the risk scoring from the criticality assessments you'll see that that is actually a Python robot running um, in the background. So this is the robot um, that is related to Highbound, right? Not the mm. one that is uh, the, the conventional one. Exactly, yeah. This is the, the new, the new Highbound Python robots. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can, these are open for modifying, right? So you can build your own Python robots on top of this that would oh, add in information. Python. Yeah. So you could connect it to security scorecard to Dun and Bradstreet and start feeding in that extra information. That's the plan. Right. Looks great. Uh, and this all runs in the cloud. So you don't need to get your customers to install anything to use yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And we can see how it's doing the, uh, if we look up, we can see how it's doing calculations. the calculations, uh, doing yeah. the calculations. Yeah. 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 It's a good thing that it's all built in because not everyone, you know, is good in Python or, you know, um, yeah. coding that. So it's really good. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. You can break it up, and you'll see um, you'll see all the all the others in here as well. I think this one actually identifies findings for you. Based on the information that's come through that uh, come through that questionnaire. But it's still um it's still early days, guys. You know. Yeah, I I I guess there are a lot of enhancements coming down the road. Yeah, a huge amount. Yeah. A huge amount because what we've what we've done, what the development team have done, is not not really built a IT risk management solution or a third party risk management solution. That's just the first configuration of that solution when you think about it what they've done is build a very flexible um, inventory and workflow engine um, behind the scenes and they've built high bond robots to help us automate that process and automate the scoring it's just itrm and tprm are the first configurations that we've released using those new capabilities So it was a huge amount of work. Right. I attended um, maybe a, uh, a few weeks back or a few months back, a session how to set up this in high bond from a technical point of view. And yeah. uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's not easy to- Not the moment, no. Yeah. Is there any enhancements coming down the road to become more um, 
user friendly and a bit more easier for us to uh... absolutely there's two 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 key enhancements coming down the road so number one is absolutely that we want it to all work um, as a toolkit just like audit risk and compliance these things are very easy to work with exactly exactly so everything will work as a um, will work as a work as a toolkit right mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and also, instead of using the APIs to configure different workflows in here, mm -hmm. uh, there will be a configuration front end, an actual user interface to do that. So you'll be able to invent loads of different things as much as you want. Um, it's just that's coming, you know, uh, next year. That's great. That's great. We were in a session and it was all moving too fast and it was very technical. <laughs> yeah, I get, I, I've done it myself. I've gone through those instructions myself and it does take a long time. Right. It's just because, you know, it's, it's just an agile development methodology, right? We just release version one, get it out to some customers, collect some feedback so that we've got something to work on to improve it. Right, right. So hopefully next year it'll be an easier process. It will be, 100%. Perfect. Thank you so much. Cool. Okay. Unless there's any more questions, I'll leave you to um, to get back to your day then. Um, I think that's it. Thank you so much, Tom, for joining. It was a very good session, very straight to the point. Uh, thank you for the good news, especially on the last point. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, uh, we always enjoy your sessions. Very informative. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, so Tom. Much, Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And we will provide Thank all the material. Is there anything more left? No, I already delivered about, uh, yeah, yeah, about ICAA. Yeah. And I hope uh, it was, uh, uh, you know, knowledgeable for all the participants. And uh, thank you very much. We will send you all the material anyhow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.